Hello and good day. Uh, my name is Chuck Gardner, and I'd like to welcome you all to the second uh, PitCon Coffee Break of 2020. Today's focus of today's talk is going to be on industrial manufacturing areas and how these areas can benefit from PitCon 2021. Let me tell you a little bit about PICON, though, first, before we get too far along. PICON was established in 1950 as a way of advancing and enriching the scientific endeavor by connecting scientists worldwide. The proceeds from PICON go to promoting science education at all age levels as administered through the two sponsoring societies of PICON, the Spectroscopy Society of Pittsburgh, and the Society for Analytical Chemists of Pittsburgh. So PICON is, taught, is broken down into a number of program tracks, uh, and today we're going to focus on industry and manufacturing, but as you can see, there's nine other program tracks that the conference addresses. So a little bit about what we're going to talk about today. First of all, who is this guy that's talking to you? Second, what skill is critical to all industries, in industry and manufacturing, but, but in all industries and in all areas of, of research? And what tools do you need to maintain that skill? And we'll talk then a little bit about how PitCon 2021 can help you develop those tools, and then we'll wrap up, and then there'll be some time for questions and hopefully some discussion. So a little bit about me. I have over 36 years of leading product development and manufacturing projects. I'm experienced in chemical manufacturing, process startup, and resolution of manufacturing issues. I spent a lot of my career developing instrumentation for the development and measurement of hazardous materials in the environment. Uh, I recently retired from Chem Image Corporation here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I've been a member of the PitCon Organizing Committee since 1987. So in, in my experience, looking across all industries and all the places I've worked and, and all the companies, people that I've talked to, what's, what skill is needed by everybody? And that really is the ability to solve problems. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about today is problem solving. So problem solving, you could call it res res resolving issues. You could talk about opportunities. There's all sorts of ways of describing it. But at its heart, it's all solving problems that are impeding progress of your company, of your research, um, of just in life in general. And the ability to solve these problems quickly, effectively, and minimizing the unintended consequences is of extreme value to all of us. So what tools are available for problem solving? Well, if you noticed on the, the cover slide, uh, I have a certification as a project management professional. And in the course of doing my, uh, my continuing education work, I came across that the Project Management Institute uh, has developed a framework for decision-making that applies directly to problem solving. They call it the Ethical Decision-Making Framework, EDMF. And it's a series of steps that project managers should go through when making an ethical decision. Well, their focus really in developing this was, was, was the role of ethics in project management. But you can see that the steps are, are applicable to, to any type of decision or problem solving situation. And if you want to learn more about it, uh, you can go to the uh, PMI website, and this link that I have here. The ethical decision making framework that PMI came up with really has five steps assessment which is make sure you have as much information about the problem as you can get. If you don't understand the problem you're trying to solve, it's, it seems obvious, but you can't solve the problem. So you need to find out about the problem. Sometimes you have to really identify what the true problem is. The, the result or the product of a problem may be several steps removed from where the problem actually is. And this is where investigative work and some of the skills we're going to talk about, some of the tools we're going to talk about a little later in this presentation really come to play. The second thing is you have to figure out some ways that you might solve the problem. And I say ways, plural, meaning that generally 
you need to evaluate a number of solutions before you can come up with an answer to the problem. And you do that by drawing on your experience, the experience of your associates. You may use formal research, internet journals, conference presentations. Um, all of these are important to help you develop alternatives to solving the problem. Next, you need to analyze those solutions. Also, all solutions or all issues seem to have pluses and minuses. And so, which you know, what pluses are, are good? The minuses, of course, are bad. You need to analyze what what is the solution going to do? What effects is it going to have? And this then carries into the fourth area, part of the decision making framework, which is the application. And again, this is tied into the analysis part as well, where you look at if I implement this solution. What are its consequences? The intended consequences, hopefully you solve the problem, but maybe what about the unintended consequences? And PMI stresses that to spend a lot of time and really a lot of effort on these, these areas, this analysis and the application. In other words, look at the solutions before you implement them to make sure you understand the full range of what could will happen. And then finally, you implement an action. You implement the solution that you've come up with, that you've analyzed, that you've looked at the application of, and then you monitor the result. Did I really solve the problem? And if you haven't, then of course you go back through the whole series again. So I think we all know this, it's pretty obvious, but what is the importance of problem solving? So a little bit of, um, over my career, I mean, I've interviewed hundreds of job candidates and I've developed one behavioral behavioral question that I ask, regardless of the position I'm interviewing for. And that is, tell me about a time in your career where you were asked to accomplish a task for which you had no prior knowledge of. And this happens to all of us in our careers. Your boss comes to you and says, you know, Mike, Chuck, I need you to solve this. And I think to myself, I don't know anything about it. But he says, this has to get solved and you're the best person at the company to solve the problem. So what I ask candidates to do is, how did you get the information to accomplish the task? What tools did you use to solve the problem? And ultimately, were you successful? It's not whether you're successful or not that, that was the real test. It's, it's the tools that you used and how you look at problems. And that stimulates a conversation on how, how you might per perform in the position that we're looking to fill. So it's a great predictor of future performance, how can you develop alternatives, to analyze those alternatives, and how well did you understand the application? It's interesting though, over my career, these, the answers to the question, at least the first part of it, the assessment part, really fall into two categories. One is I, I researched the problem on the internet in scientific journals or at the library, and the second one is I talk to the stakeholders, which is a project management term for just the people who are involved around the problem, involved with the problem being solved. So what I observed, which was that younger people with less industrial experience tend to use the internet resources to seek information about the issues they face. More experienced candidates tend to do both, tend to look at the internet, literature sources, but also talk to people involved. I've also had the, the, the honor of interviewing a number of young men and women coming out of the military as officers and found that they tended to get information by talking to the soldiers under their command. And they found that that was the best info way of finding out, of understanding the problems that they face in, in typically in their new positions because they tend to rotate between uh, positions much more frequently than a lot of us in the industrial world. But the bottom line is that good problem solving requires the skills to work in both, being able to look in at resources on the internet or other places for information on how to solve the problem, but also to talk to the people that are involved with it. Whether that be in the lab, whether it be on the production floor, whether it be customers sometimes, all of these are potential way, resources to use to apply to problem solving. So how can attending a, a trade show, an exhibition and conference like PICCON 2021 help you develop your problem solving skills? Well, there's a number of ways. One, we have a technical program of both 
oral and poster presentations. We have a number of short courses where a small group of people get together with one or more instructors and learn and spend some time in depth learning about a specific area. These provide access to how other scientists and engineers have solved similar problems. Now, generally, they're not, gonna, they're not solving the same exact problems that you face, but they're solving similar ones and learning how they apply their skills and how they apply their alternatives to those problems can help you in your problem solving situations. They provide an understanding on problem solving outcomes. In other words, you can see what they did and you can see what their outcomes were. The PICCON exhibit of, of laboratory instruments, uh, laboratory equipment is a showcase for hardware and software that might help solve a problem, help you develop alternatives in solving that problem. And there are also multiple opportunities to network with other scientists and engineers. Again, see how others have solved problems. Build your professional network so that you can reach out to people when you're faced with a problem that they may have seen. And you can all, everyone, all of us can use this to help improve your communication skills. So let's look at these areas a little more in depth. The technical program. Some technical program sessions of interest to industry and manufacturing are, and I just pulled these out of the list. There's many, many, many more at the, uh, as you look on the PICCON.org uh, website. Uh, more sessions are being added here every day. But there's sessions on catalysts for, for the chemical industry. There's advances in, in measurement science uh, that are talked about by, uh, by folks with, uh, through the American Chemical Society. Uh, the Compliance Society for Vibrational Spectroscopy offers the Williams Wright Award, which is given to an industrial spectroscopist. Recent advances in mass spectrometry for process monitoring, which is an area that I actually uh, did some work in a few years ago. Uh, new frontiers in near-infrared spectroscopy. All sorts of things about area of talks about HPLC, column advancements, method development. Uh, for a wide range of, of different types of analytes. And again, as I said, much, much more information can be found on the PICCON.org website. Short courses. Again, areas where a small group of people get together with one or more instructors and spend a day or two or a half day just learning more about that area. They can provide training on technical areas, but also team interactions on how to improve your communication skills, how to improve your writing skills, how to improve your presentation skills. All of these are great tools for, project, for people out there solving problems. And there's, there's courses on various areas of spectroscopy, thermal analysis, uh, how to deliver a winning technical presentation, how to be a better leader in the lab, coaching and mentoring, safety in the laboratory, a little bit about the art of, of scientific research. And is, is again, an area that's becoming more and more important to all of us, how about green analytical chemistry? And again, go to our website and find out much, much more about these areas, about these short courses. Networking opportunities. PICCON has, has such a wide variety of networking opportunities. We have, a number of years ago, we came up with the idea of what we call networking sessions. And these are 90-minute sessions that provide an opportunity for attendees with similar interests to sit down at a big table and talk to other professionals about the issues that they're facing, maybe the problems that they're trying to solve. Uh, we haven't developed our, our formal list yet for, for PICCON 2021, but in the past, we've had areas, we've had sessions, networking sessions on food science, specialty analysis, material science, biomedical analysis, laboratory information data systems and pharmaceutical science. Uh, again, look for a very rich set of offerings in this area for PICCON 2021. Again, you can always go up to a speaker after a talk and talk to him a little bit about him, he or, he or she about their, their work and maybe some of the ideas that they may have for some of the things that you're doing. Uh, if not at the conference, you can get their email address. It's generally in their, their abstract. You can contact them and ask them about it to continue that conversation. You can arrange to meet with short course instructors to discuss your interests. 
if they're if they're if your interests align with what they are presenting. One of the key things that all of us can do now is we can help identify the people that we want to add to our professional network so that we have this tool bag of, of resources of people that we can go to and ask questions. And maybe they can help us with either you know developing alternatives, perhaps talking about on the analysis side, if, if they've done similar things, what types of results did they get? So one of the things that I want to just mention is we have the COVID, we're in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's affected each and every one of us. It's provided a constantly changing environment against each against which all of us are living our lives. Trade shows are no exception. The Pittsburgh Conference Organizing Committee is hard at work planning for BitCon 2021, but we also face COVID-related challenges on how best to hold this. We have government mandates. We have not only, you know, in our host city of New Orleans, but here, you know, in the Pittsburgh area where we're all based, you know, we can't get, have large gatherings. We can't hold organizing meetings like we used to. And so this is posing a constant and continual challenge to us organizing Bitcoin 2021. However, keep rest assured that we as the committee We'll do everything in our power to make sure that PICON 2021 is a safe environment for scientific exchange. And I ask each of you to, to keep it up to date with our latest plans by visiting our dedicated webpage, PICON.org slash update, where as, as more information becomes available and as the committee is making more making decisions on what PICON 2021 is look, going to look like, that information will be posted so that everybody can see where we are. Okay, well, that's pretty much most of what I wanted to talk about this afternoon, or at least this afternoon in Pittsburgh as we do this. It's a beautiful fall afternoon, actually. Um, but a point I'm trying to make is the ability to solve problems is a key skill in every industry and in every research and manufacturing facility. And that attending PitCon 2021 is one of the best opportunities for each of you to refine your problem solving skills. We have the technical program, the exhibit of analytical and laboratory instruments and supplies, the extensive short course program, and the multitude of opportunities for networking. And I'd like to thank you, each and every one of you, for your time today. And now I think that we've got time uh, for some questions and some discussion. So let me pull up the question list here, if there are any. So one, I've got a cup. I've got a question here about um, more on the project management side. But what's uh, what's the most challenging obstacle to overcome when managing projects? Well, I think the most challenging obstacles you overcome, and, and I have to be careful how I say this, but really it's it's people's personalities. Everybody wants to do a good job. Everybody wants to solve the problems that are facing them, wants, wants to achieve the goal that the group is working on. But we all have our own ideas of how that, that, that is done. And it's really up to the project manager to get a bunch of people who have other things that they could be doing, getting them all focused on a single goal. And that's probably the most challenging obstacle in project management. It's usually not the technology, it's, but it's the, it's the group dynamics getting them to focus on solving the, the problems and and and, may, and achieving the goals that are out there. And then that's not to say that, that people are, are, like I said, are inherently bad, they're not. It's just that they have their own ideas on how to do it and it's everybody's got to be working together. And that's, that's really the main goal of the project manager is to get everybody working together towards that, that common goal. And so another question I have here is, you find that different leadership styles and or communication styles work better in the project management field. And the, the short answer is, is that I think you need to tailor your communication style to the people or the groups that you're trying to communicate with. I mean, as we as, we as project managers talk about stakeholders. And so we have the stakeholders or, or part of the people working on the project, 
stakeholders are executive management, stakeholders are customers, and each group requires different communication approaches. And each person within that group may require a different communication approach. And so it's really up to the project manager to tailor the methods that they use to the, to the people that they're, that they're communicating with. Hand raised. Uh, I'm going to unmute in case you would like to ask your question. Sure. Hello. Uh, back to you. Uh, do you have a question for Chuck? If not, his hand was raised. So. Scott, I'm I'm looking for some more questions here. Do we do we have any? Okay. Well, I guess this is uh, at this point. Um, if there's no further questions, I'd like to just remind everybody that PitCon 2021 is taking place from March 6th through the 10th, in 2021, New Orleans, Louisiana, Memorial Convention Center. Short courses start on Saturday, March 6th. The technical program will run through this March 7th through the 10th, and the exposition will be on March 8th through the 10th. Again, I thank each and every one of you for the time that you've, you've taken today to listen to, to our story and uh, talk a little bit about problem solving. I wish you all uh, continued success in your careers. Um, stay safe, and uh, I hope that, to, that you'll be able to participate in PitCon 2021. Okay. Are activities planned to be virtual? So right now we're planning for a hybrid show, which is both virtual and in person. So there will be a number of activities that will be virtual, yes. Um, as conditions go in the city of New Orleans and across the country, uh, we may be forced to look at that decision and decide to go uh, maybe to a, to a completely virtual show. But that decision it has not been made yet. Like that's it. Okay, thank you very much and have a great day. So that dude's really had a hard day.